Mm. All right. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Shivkant Tilekar. I am Senior Application Engineer of Beacon. And uh, today's uh, session will be about uh, how we can improve our performance of the wall using SOLIDOX Flow Simulation. So, I'm very excited to show you all the new things in the SOLIDOX Flow Simulation. Let's get started right away. So the agenda for the today's session is as following. Uh, first, we'll see what is fluid flow analysis. Then uh, we'll see why sort of flow simulation. Then uh, we'll take uh, three case studies, which is solved using sort of flow simulation, which addresses your problems. And then uh, we'll uh, see the demonstration on those case studies. And finally, we will summarize uh, by the benefits and the, um, the advantages of the sort of flow simulation. So, uh, let's get started. Uh, when I put it, uh, what is fluid flow analysis? This is a very uh, crude definition of uh, what is uh, fluid flow analysis. It is nothing but the uh, real life simulation of the fluid or the heat transfer problems on a computer. So, this is the definition that everybody understands, right? And uh, who can benefit from it is like uh, the engineer who designed the products, they can greatly, greatly benefit from it. Uh, believe me my friends uh, your 3d CAD models is your biggest assets with which you can really do wonders and what those wonders are you will see in uh, upcoming slides so you will see uh, the simulation of the real life fluid problem is very important otherwise what we have to do is is this the physical testing of course we have to spend hours and hours we have to spend uh, the man for assigning the job we have, we have to spend spaces we have to assign equipments and all and then we'll get the final result at output and which may cause a delay in our project so with the help of soldox flow simulation what you can do is you can achieve the faster leading time with the less expensive testing in the software itself it will give you the ability to investigate what if studies and with the help of comprehensive results we can visualize the plots on directly on our screen and it is required much much less efforts than assigning a dedicated person for the uh, lab work right solidox flow simulation uh, comes into a variety of packages uh, including solidox simulation which is the finite element analysis solidox motion is a rigid body motion rigid body uh, analysis we can do it in here then uh, solidox flow simulation which is a uh, agenda for the today's topic and uh, along with that we have dedicated plastic solutions in the portfolio of solid simulation and a sustainability which can calculate the impact of your design under the environment so in this session we are going to only focus on solid flow simulation so i'm very excited to show you this so computerized testing in the solid gives you the single window integration with the solid what does that mean? I mean to say your CAD models and your the simulation is in the same window. You just have to switch it a tab in order to achieve that effect. No need to switch to other platform in order to uh, validate your model. If there are any changes, you have to again come back to the SOLIDWORKS, do the changes, again go back to that. That process, that headache is actually taken off. Okay, and this is having automatic associativity with the solid of geometry this is now what i explained and it will automatically detect the fluid region and it is very easy to use in upcoming slides i'll actually exactly going to explain same thing it is very easy to use and it have very very short learning curve so solid looks offer a sort of flow simulation offer the technical capability in the following manner so it will offer the internal external flows analysis compressible incompressible flows and uh, we can solve also the variety of uh, heat transfer problems if there are any rotating components we can take advantage of the rotating regions and uh, we uh, compute the fluid flow pattern in the uh, in the model along with that we can do the time dependent analysis and it, these capabilities not limited to that we can also ex uh, we can also on the top of that we can add the electronic cooling model if you dedicatedly have any electronic components into your assembly and you want to uh, prevent that from the heat failures then electronic cooling is the model for you 
and of course uh, the HVAC applications heat ventilation and air conditioning applications these things uh, can be calculated uh, using the comfort parameters and the advanced radiation study we can take advantage of this HVAC package and calculate the comfort parameters within one so uh, this sites uh, put only uh, the technical capabilities of a solid flow simulation as I already explained uh, it uh, simulate the compressible as well as un uh, incompressible flows internal or external flows uh, can be uh, simulated even the non newtonian fluids like blood uh, we can simulate the flow of that also uh, along with that uh, we do have the turbulence model with which we can uh, solve the turbulence problem also and uh, uh, we can do uh, we can solve the conjugate heat transfer problem with a natural or force convection along with that and of course we can do the time dependent study in uh, Solid flow simulation as well. And uh, the most uh, basic thing about any simulation software is the mathematics inside it. In solid flow simulation, it solves the Navier Stokes equation, which is the formulation of the momentum, mass, and the energy conservation law. So, if I put it uh, in a very simplified format, then I can put this term into the mass, into, mass into the acceleration. And uh, to the right hand side terms, it is nothing but the summation of the forces. So it's basically follow the Newton's second law, forces mass into the acceleration. So it's very uh, it's easy to understand, right? So and this is what I was talking about. Uh, depending on the Reynolds number, we can uh, in differentiate our flows into laminar flows as well as turbulent flow. And uh, with the help of uh, standard K epsilon turbulence model, we can uh, solve the complicated problems of the turbulence here as well. And uh, for these things, uh, for the mathematics, there's a numerical basis for the CAD embedded CFT. We do have the white paper ready. Uh, I encourage you to investigate more on that front and uh, we'll be happy to help you on this. So using all these capabilities, we can solve a variety of problems of day-to-day -day challenge, day -day challenges. Not only uh, the evolved problem, we can do the electronic cooling, the Port flows, HVAC, aerodynamics, the applications are limitless. But for this presentation, I'm only going to focus on uh, major three case studies uh, uh, which I have um, prepared for this presentation. First, uh, we'll see the demonstration on the control walls. And uh, in order to uh, showcase this, uh, let's uh, set some boundary conditions and, and let's set some aims in order to uh, explore what solid flow simulation can do so first uh, in this uh, case study i have uh, this uh, globe wall with me where this this, uh, this is side from the inlet and this side will get an outlet and my aim is to calculate the cv at a different opening conditions so what i'll do is uh, with the powerful capabilities of solid of 3d model i can uh, make this uh, handle go up and down using the different configurations and we'll uh, compute a different different cvs at a different different opening conditions and the inputs for that is uh the inlet condition is the flow rudder is uh, 0 0.6 meter cube per second and the temperature of the fluid is at 80 degrees celsius because the fluid is water and uh outlet is at environmental conditions and the temperature is 30 degrees celsius and the different opening conditions are listed over here like 25 percent open 50 percent open 75 and 100 percent so we'll go into uh, set up a study for one of those and uh, see uh, how effectively we can do it. So here, uh, the position have been shown. The quarterly open position will look like this, half open. And this is a fully open position. So here, uh, for the CV, we have uh, to calculate a very essential entity that is called the pressure drop. And that is the objective of the study. And in order to do that, let's take a quick look at the project setup. Uh, it is very easy to set up a project using the project wizard. I'm going to first show it on the PPT and then I'll switch it to the SOLIDWORKS and uh, show the live demonstration for that. So it is very easy to set up a model using the project wizard. So as you can see, you will pop up with the screen of project wizard where you can set a project name, configurations that you are using. Of course, along with that, uh, we have to set up the unit system. Uh, this step, uh, just like uh, I set up the unit system uh, for the company over here, and you can see uh, we can customize our unit system and take advantage of uh, that unit system every time. 
along with that we have to specify which type of analysis that you want to perform the internal or the external internal analysis means which uh, flows into the closed volume and external means which flows over the body we have to specify that type and if you want to exclude any cavities that is without the flow conditions we can have option to exclude those cavities because that is not taking part into our analysis along with that uh, we have different options to check out on here uh, we can turn on the gravity if there is any rotation components we can turn on the rotation components and uh, if there are free surfaces then we can uh, turn on the free surface components and heat conduction in solid also. the next step is uh, we have to specify uh, the model setup for the study and here we have to specify the different types of fluid that is going to take part into this analysis uh solid dogs flow simulation do have the extensive fluid library we can take advantage we can take advantage of that along with that uh the various solid materials uh, which is taking part into the analysis this may be helpful when we are specifying the uh, heat transfer problems uh, so that uh, we can if, uh, accurately calculate the uh, heat transfer between the uh, fluids and a variety of solid material library is already available uh, into this product setup here. As long as uh, the different wall conditions can be taken care uh, right away over here. Uh, if you have adiabatic wall or there's a uh, heat uh, conduction uh, in the wall, then we can uh, specify the parameters right away over here. And we can specify the roughness values here also. Finally, the initial project conditions can be set up and then uh, we'll good to go for the other stuff. That's mesh. So let's uh, jump to the SolidWorks and see it. What do we do have here? As you can see it in here, I am already into the SolidWorks user interface and uh, the model for the this globe wall is already ready. Uh, let's quickly take a section view and see what's inside it. This is very effective use uh, for the section view. And uh, as you can see in the screen uh, here, I'm already into the flow simulation tab. If you want to activate in here, you just have to click in the add in over here or activate these things from the add in. Once these things are activated, new tab will generate and uh, we can move forward with the project setup. Along with this, uh, we just have the open the project wizard, which you've just seen. And here, what we have, uh, we have just have to set up a new project. As I have already told you, uh, uh, key, uh, we have uh, to set up this for the different different configuration we can make use of uh, different configurations from here along with that the unit system can be taken care of the type of flow in here once that uh, we have to select a liquid in this case it will be the water or if there any uh, we want to do the cavitation study we just have to turn on the box along with this uh, different wall uh, conditions can be specified the default wall thermal conditions these are as following heat flux Heat transfer rate and the water impression and afterwards we'll specify the thermodynamic parameters and we are good to go i've already gone ahead and specified all those things for us and uh, just as we uh, specified my study has been ready over here next thing uh, that i want to do is i had to specify the computational domain computational domain is nothing but uh, where my calculations takes place the solid flow simulation works on the uh, finite volume method and uh, with the help of this computation domain uh, at a critical region it will divide itself into the finite volume so that it will from cell to cell it will calculate uh, the flow conditions and uh, avail it finally fetches the results so once the uh, computational domain has been set up uh, i can uh, go ahead and specify the boundary conditions in here the inlet volume flow we just have to select the internal phase of it and uh, there are different boundary conditions involved when I open that, as it, uh, on the left hand side, you can see there are different different types of boundary conditions uh, depending on the flow openings, pressure openings, or the walls. Okay, for this, uh, I just have to select an internet master and specified uh, the parameter in here, which is uh, specified over here. If I just uh, display all the callouts, the pressure openings uh, have been specified over here at the outlet, and at the inlet, we do have the inlet volume flow once these things have been specified uh, the next step uh, which is very uh, crucial step into our analysis is to specify the goal and here that aim that we saw will come into the picture the goals are uh, very uh, easy to set up we have different types of goal available the global goal surface goal which is uh, at, we can calculate the parameters for the surface 
the volume goals or the equations goal we can uh, make use of the other goals and create an equation so that i can get the my desired values over here just like uh, the goal i have specified i want to calculate the inlet pressure because i have calculated i have uh, given the uh, inlet volume flow over here and outlet pressure after a flow has been developed uh, the there will be no longer environmental pressure this is this thing will be different and uh, i have to calculate the pressure drop so this is nothing but an equation goal so in this uh, i just have to select the inlet pressure minus outlet pressure so that the difference will be pressure drop as in our case so just like that i can go ahead and specify the other stuff also right So the next step uh, in our process is uh, nothing but the mesh. So here uh, we do have uh, two different types of mesh uh, plots available. Uh, first one is a global mesh. Global mesh is, uh, as you can see, the elements uh, have been uh, set up over here. And uh, the general thumb rule is uh, we have to fit uh, at least two elements within the small gap of those components where the where we want to have the flow to happen and uh, this is a very crucial part uh, in every uh, final element uh, sorry every uh, cfd softwares that we have and here uh so let's do offer uh, offer different uh, uh meshed uh, types uh, to be taken place first one is can be global mesh and uh, second one can be localized mesh in this case, the localized mesh has been applied, as you can see, in this unpredictable flow region pattern, uh, we, the mesh pattern has been uh, very, very complex. And uh, uh, as I switch to the software, I'll see these things in detail. So general thing is, uh, if you are do better mesh, you will get the good results. And uh, so let's do offer, offer the uh, adaptive mesh refinements here as well. As you can see, uh, if you have any rotating components into your assembly, uh, the sliding mesh is a very good capability of the SOLIDWORKS and we can take advantage of that. So uh, let's switch to the SOLIDWORKS and see it uh, how we can set up a mesh over here. Uh, we have to have uh, the uh, mesh tab over here. We just have to go to the edit definition and uh, here we can set the level of mesh refinement. There are two types of mesh, automatic and manuals. If you want to uh, calculate any local mesh, then local mesh can be specified over here. I just have to uh, go to this uh, local mesh tab select any surface that you want to specify the global mesh for let's say for this region you want to specify you just have to select the surfaces which are there and you can refine uh, the level of fluid cells level of uh, solid cells boundaries over from here so that uh, the mesh uh, can be very intense so i have already gone ahead and specified the mesh for you let me show you the cut plot for the study so for the open wall open wall uh, fully open uh, uh, wall conditions i have uh, this type of mesh uh, with the global mesh refinement one uh, which will be very good because uh, there are uh, enough elements to uh, measure the flow parameters over here but if i go to the other mesh studies let me activate uh, one of the uh, quarterly open walls because uh, now this area has been decreased and uh, the flow will be unpredictable over here in that case uh, we can take advantage of this local mesh and uh, the adaptive meshing as well as you can see the now as compared to this uh, first level refinement in the other region only those areas have been uh, uh, i mean mesh very critically which are very crucial importance for us uh, we can go up to the uh, different different mesh levels from the uh, this uh, mesh visit so here, uh, if I compare this mesh with the other CFDs, uh, we do have the immersed boundary cartesian mesh, and uh, this the following advantage uh, will be as the it is efficiently minimize the approximation error and uh, local truncation error using such a type of mesh, and uh, the setup for this mesh is very easy, and uh, we can give. Uh, we can we can actually make the uh, grid generation robust and very flexible using this immersed boundary condition mesh. So finally, when I run the study, uh, for running the study, you just have to hit on the run. Uh, the study will be calculated and uh, uh, converge automatically. The calculation control options will actually help you to for the goal convergence, uh, which type of convergence that you want to. One or you depending on the iterations you want to stop the calculations yes 
this option is also there uh, and uh, the level of refinement for the adaptive machines can be set from here for the solving in here and uh, once these things have been calculated uh, there are two studies that i want to compare uh, in here first uh, one is a uh, fully open and second one is the quarterly open wall just in order to give you the hunch uh, what sort of looks uh, flow simulation uh, i can offer you so and for the quarterly open wall uh, which i which is the current uh, i am active study over here uh, here uh, with the help of uh, the cut plots we can see different different uh, cut plots in here let me show you the cut plot uh, for the total pressure in here as you can see if i just zoom in here and the total pressure is actually an eye on a higher side on this region which is on the lower side on this region All right so as i go to the uh, other uh, cut plots i just have option to select the other cut plots parameter from here we can specify the different different cut loss parameters such as fluid density pressure and all other parameters so you can select just like we select uh, anything from the goals and uh, for the as for the value concern uh, we do have the goal plots uh, if you just uh, insert those values as you can see we just uh, hit on the shows the value can be specified in here uh, along with the pressure drop the pressure drop is around uh, 24,961 pascals in this case so which is very quite uh, uh, because this is a uh, quarterly open wall the pressure drop is much but uh, let's check for the fully open so as I go into the fully open now uh, uh, let me hide the mesh uh, quality over here and uh, check uh, with the uh, goal plots so when I insert the goal plots and select the the goals that we have defined and showcase the goal the pressure drop is much less because the wall is fully open in this case which is a very quite thing but the values uh, will be taken into the considerations like in here along with that uh, we do have the parameters to uh, show in here let's say if we compare uh, what is the range of the velocity uh, it's just vary between us you can see by the graph here itself or if we just uh, have a graph for the pressure drops uh, this graph will be shown in here which is very correct thing uh, which is very correct thing like which so let's uh, get back to the ppt and summarize this so uh, for the pressure drop for the fully open balls uh, we can also uh, actually track the flow trajectories in the upcoming studies i'll uh, show the flow trajectories here as well uh, in this uh, we have specified the cut plots and uh, for the velocity as well as the pressure drop as you can see it in here for the fully open and uh, for the fully open uh, we have seen the pressure drop in here likewise in this goal and of course in the quarterly open uh, we do have a different pressure drop than the fully open one and if i just compare those things as you can see the pressure drop values is much much different in both the cases and by using these values we can calculate the series and fulfill our goal so uh, next uh, stage uh, is if you do want to calculate uh, any safety of our valve under these pressure conditions uh, in SOLIDWORKS we do have option to export this results to the finite element methods and uh, we can take advantage of SOLIDWORKS static and uh, linear static analysis in here or uh, all the capabilities also non-linear is also available we can make use of that uh, capabilities and uh, calculate uh, the different parameters such as stress displacement factor of safety strains etc so uh, next uh, type of problem uh, that i want to uh, i want to focus in here the case second case study is uh, cavitation uh, in order to uh, do this cavitation study uh, the only change in the project setup over here it's to uh, in general settings or the defining the type of fluid we just have to check in the box of the cavitation here and uh, goals we have to at least keep this goal you know, in order to get the convergence of the study that uh, minimum density of global goal of minimum density of the fluid and uh, average density of fluid so here when i switch to the solid box i can uh, quickly open the new study from here uh, the recent uh, tab is very much helpful in this case i can pin down the project that i'm working on so when i open the study as you can see for this uh, study i have uh, taken into considerations 
the this cone wall and uh, project description is that follow the water flows at uh, 363 kelvin uh, through the pipe at uh, 3.5 meter per second and it, it typically blocks uh, in here and we have to uh, calculate uh, how much dramatic pressure drop and we have to check for the cavitations these things can be done uh, using the uh, plotting the density uh, over here so let's switch to the solidworks and see so projects have already been set up and uh, when i activate this cavitation project and uh, i can load the results and i already see, you can see there are different boundary conditions that have already been there the inlet velocity and the static pressure at the outlet and uh, the goals uh, that have been specified for the study is uh, minimum density or global goal of minimum density and average density of fluid once this study uh, run i can uh, directly go here and uh, showcase the cut plot in here as you can see in this region my density actually varies too much which is the basic indication of uh, the cavitation is occurring in this region as you can see i can have effective probe tools i can probe it in here uh, we can plot uh, the density by this mean all right uh, along with that uh, we do have uh, other capabilities of showing the xy plot in the xy plot uh, it will actually give you the graph along this region in order to do that i just try to uh, go, go into any plane uh, draw any sketch 2d or 3d sketch can do for the study i just draw the 2d sketch when this sketch has been drawn i just have to go back to the xy plot and uh, insert uh, that sketch in here and specify which type of parameter that you want to plot for here i have to plot this density so if i just click ok the xy plot will be generated if i just show that plot uh, the density will vary in such a way as you can see in here there's a quite a fluctuation in density which can vary from this around uh, 360 to 1000 uh, the fluid is essentially the water. So this is the indication that uh, the cavitation is occurring in this region. So just uh, as we uh, uh, see, the density variation is quite much in this model, and uh, uh, which varies from uh, only uh, around thousand to um, two hundred and eighties uh, over here, even sixty one in this region. So in order to uh, get the idea of the gravitation we can also use the plot for the water mass fraction water volume fraction and uh, vapor fraction or the vapor volume fraction uh, in the same plot we just have to vary the parameter in here and we get the plot right okay uh, the final thing uh, that I want to show here is uh, the parametric study and the goal optimization this is a very 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 uh, uh, useful study if we have to find out the effective parameters for our uh, walls in the in here uh, i have taken another problem of the piston wall and the problem description is uh, as follows uh, the water actually enters from here and exits around uh, this uh, circular region and uh, there's a spring over here and uh, it exerts uh, the force of six newton in order to move so we have to calculate at what distance this action will take place so the inlet conditions here is uh, the inlet is a two bar and the outlet is a one bar and uh, since there is a, it is a quite symmetric model uh, i have made use of uh, the symmetry of the computational domain in order to reduce down our efforts for the calculation so in order to activate uh, my goal optimization study we can directly go here into the tools and into the sol and define the new uh, parametric study and here we can uh, define different types of input variables uh, like a uh, simulation variables or dimension uh, dimension parameters also we can enter we just have to uh, enter the input variables right away in this interface and just as we switch the tab the criteria we can specify uh, here the criteria will be force and we are we are keeping tab on that and uh, the outward parameters uh, we can specify in here so uh, let's just uh, switch to the solidworks and see it so here i have my piston wall uh, when I open that piston wall, as you can see, uh, the study of parametric have already been specified. This is nothing but we just had to go to the tools, uh, the flow simulation, and uh, in the solve, we have to define a new parametric study. A new parametric study will be specified. Here, I just uh, open the study, 
the dialog box will appear at the bottom and here uh, i have uh, full control over uh, to do the whole optimization there are different optimization study uh, for the water analysis on design of experience here also for this presentation i am keeping the scope uh, for the goal optimization here as well and uh, we can add the parameters here my objective is to calculate uh, the configuration or the calculator range of this uh, piston where the my uh, 6 newton force will be applied on this piston so i have to place this piston at that precise location so that uh, my flow will be uh, occurring in this place so i have to calculate that range so in order to do that i'm specifying the current value over here and uh, giving the range over here so this can vary from uh, three millimeters to the six millimeters in the step of one millimeter so once uh, this thing is specified you just have to select the, the parameters from the model here uh, in the mate group i have selected uh, this distance mate over here so this distance mate have been linked to the goal optimization study and we can move forward once uh, this thing have been linked we have to specify the criteria that is force and uh, since uh, the computational domain here have been reduced into the one quarter just as been shown over here my force value have been uh, symmetrically reduced to 1.5 newton so and i have selected uh, the criteria over here so you can uh, select the criteria of the goal and the goal have been specified in the study i can just have to select that value that value will be linked to the uh, this criteria and in the output parameters i do want uh, the uh, force to calculate so here finally we have the scenarios uh, the scenario depending on that have already been calculated for this demonstration i just run the study okay yes so in uh, different variations uh, of these distances it will uh, try to calculate the the force values i mean uh, in uh, which is applied over here as you can see uh, it is calculated the first design point uh, the value of the force have been fetched as a 1.9 newton and uh, the second design point has already been calculated and it goes on calculating in uh, different different increments that we specified over here okay once the solution has been converged i can get a message of that solution has been converged and is nothing but the design point three so the distance uh, which is ideally located in here is 4.8 right. so likewise we just try to uh, select the scenario it will automatically apply this to the default settings over here so that uh, we can move forward with the further things so just like we discussed it basically runs the various scenarios by varying the specified parameters and uh, at we just summarize that uh, four, at 4.8 we'll get our target value of 1.5 uh, meters so uh, this slide actually explains uh, what happens um, i mean what you can do to take a better design decisions early in the process using the sort of stress simulation typically what we do here is uh, we develop a concept by the use of the end user needs then we do the product uh, detailed design product mm -hmm. then we uh, switch on to the technical communication or the validation of the prototype and then we put it into the operations but if you work with the solidworks flow simulation and uh, you can actually cut down that time and we can actually uh, make a better design decisions early in the process because we are not working in a serial we are working parallelly along with our preliminary concept and the detailed design so uh, this basically shows you uh, the comparison between if the cfd uh, have been used downstream of the design process or uh, the testing have been done at the downstream this actually uh, uh, have more efforts to do we have to put on more efforts in order to validate those things but if we have uh, used the uh, cfd at upfront we can avoid this uh, more effort or the firing situation uh, before the production and we have a solid thing in our hand because we have mathematics behind it and uh, we have actually solved this problem using the powerful capability of solid oxygen so uh, the benefits are 
it is integrated powerful yet easy to use and it is coupled to fit the simulation that's the thing uh, solidworks plus simulation offers to you so it is very easy to use and uh, very have short learning curves and uh, we can integrate this thing with the solidworks and check uh, what if studies in very much efficient fashion and uh, it is a single source of solutions of course the training will be provided by the beacon we do provide extensive ex ex extensive training and the supports for this product mm -hmm. and if i talk about the industrial presence uh, the figures are right in front of you we do have extensive presence uh, presence in the uh, different different industry verticals as i've been specified over here but the walls uh, this value is around 16 percent in total and uh, as far as the indian market goes uh, this thing uh, uh, the current customers that are actually using these uh, sort of slow simulation have been listed right in touch. So, uh, before parting away, I have to uh, make an announcement that uh, we are planning the hands on session on solid of flow simulation where uh, the users can walk in and uh, actually get the feel how easy it is to set up the model in the project, how easy it is to mesh, and how easy it is to run. So this uh, have been, this hands-on session uh, is conducted on uh, 9th of July 2019 at uh, from 10 a.m. It can go up to four hours, and uh, the address for this is the Beacon facility. Uh, the addresses have been displayed right in front of you. I suggest you to go into the snapshot window and uh, take a snapshot uh, snapshot of uh, snapshot of it. And uh, for this, uh, in order to register, you have to contact uh, Niranjan Gole. Uh, he is my uh, colleague, and the contact name information have been specified on the screen. So, uh, see you on the 9th of July. I hope uh, everyone uh, will register because uh, I believe I have presented this webinar very well, and you are very excited to uh, know about it. So, uh, thank you very much. If you have any doubts uh, you can mail me also and at the end of the session i can uh, hold on some more, hold on for some more time and uh, clarify your doubts so this is my contact details thank you very much